Sonny Michael Chohan, and I was the writer, um, director, and producer of this. And I also edited Guilty Pleasures, and obviously also played the lead role, Ryan. Do you know something? If I knew those boys worked for you, I would have broken more than just a one kneecap. Just make sure you stay away. I can't promise you that. So you wrote the whole production. The red album. Yeah. So, um, especially um, you feel to the pleasure, very dark storyline. So, yeah. what kind of inspired you to. Uh, just life. Just life. Things that I've seen. Um, places I used to work in before, I used to hang around with. You know, different people not realising that they're part of these gangs or go to these places. And, you know, once I realised, I kind of got out of there. And, um, you know, I started hanging around with a different gang of people, different groups, people that were, you know, into the same sort of stuff as me, acting, writing, filmmaking. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's what inspired me to write the story. Um, and obviously coming from Derby, where a lot of people got arrested in 2010 for the same thing, sex trafficking, it was a big thing in Derby back then. And that's what kind of inspired me to write the story. Hi, my name is David Kikadia and I play Sid in Guilty Pleasures. You better pray that they get me back my gear. Because if you don't, I will cut your fucking throat. Well, if I'm honest with you, it was uh, kind of born out of uh, necessity. Uh, myself and Sonny and, you know, the others, uh, we'd all pretty much worked the circuit, been doing auditions, do free plays, you know, films for expenses, student films, etc. Um, and to kind of finance an acting film, and an acting career is difficult headshots, you know, going to auditions, etc. And we weren't getting the, the parts and roles that we wanted to. So we decided to to make our own so we had the story Sonny had the story with Tainted Love um, we got a network of crew cast equipment etc all together and made the shorts turned out to be not bad work actually you know of good quality you know people who are who, are, who came together on the, in, their, in their spare time you know it's something it's something that we're proud of and then from that we gained the confidence that we could do something a little bit bigger so the idea of Guilty Pleasures was born. Now, Guilty Pleasures is a story, it's, it touches upon the, the recent uh, uh, child grooming and sex trafficking children um, that, that have, have occurred throughout the country, Rotherham, Derby, etc. So there's an element of that, it touches upon on that lifestyle. Um, but it's about two characters, uh, Rehan and Sid. Um, Sid comes back after a number of years to find that Rehan has, has almost taken his role um, he married the love of his life as a, as a child with her um, and his father has accepted him as his son and Sid the outcast so I won't give too much away but it's, it's the journey of those two characters how they, how they slowly but surely pass each other and, and become almost opposites okay. so what kind of feedback have you had so far like you've seen the whole film yeah. start to finish what's your personal kind of my, my, my personal view is as I said it's, it's it's an excellent piece of work. Um, it flows. The acting's great. We've got. We feel we've got a good quality of, of actors. The production quality is very good. It's been put to, put together very, extremely well. Everyone's done a great job on that. So I think it has it has quality. Now we can all we can do is move on from this and hope that you know, this, this manages to you know, tweak someone tweak someone's attention. And you never know. I've actually learnt a lot. Um, mainly a lot, a lot of the media lies, stuff that they show on the news all the time. Um, half of it's not true, so I wanted to do my research through actual people rather than just seeing what, what I'm seeing on the news. Did you have a lot of sort of support from family and friends throughout this both productions? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't at first with Guilty Pleasures because obviously the storyline, everyone thought I was kind of like showing Asians in the bad light and all this sort of stuff, and everyone was like, oh, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't, you shouldn't put us down. Um, but obviously, if you watch the actual episode, you'll realise that it's not that. It's kind of showing all different angles, all different you know races, and that's why I kind of set it in Birmingham as well, because you know it's a multicultural place. And um, but yeah, I did I did get a lot of 
a lot of uh, negativity at the beginning, but obviously as as it went on and people realised how serious I'm about it, and I'm, you know, because it is quite a risky project to do because you know one wrong move and you can completely go a different way. But you know, after tonight's um, feedback, I think it was good. So I got a lot of sport. Um, but yeah. I'm uh, Javed Khan and I play the role of Uncle Mo in Guilty Pleasure. You listen to me, boy. Whoever the hell you are, this is a family matter. What I say to my son is none of your concern. You understand me? It's not too much of a spoiler, this, but the uh, Uncle Mo, he's very, very close to uh, Rehan. Um, Sonny's character and he treats him like a son he brings him up like a son because he took charge of him when he was little due to uh, incidents and circumstances in the past life and Sid who is uh, Uncle Mo's real son um, played by Dave um, he is a bit distant from him so there's all that family dynamics going on there excellent so what inspired you to be part of this production um, well, uh, Sonny, uh, the director and filmmaker of this one, um, he uh, got in touch with me and said there was a, a role going for uh, an uncle and he sent me the script, uh, uh, more of sides of what my role was in it um, because the way it was casted, um, we, uh, this is the first time I'm going to see it in its entirety um, because everybody had their own scenes so we weren't quite sure what was going on with other people's kind of set up and, and uh, uh, tangents in their lives but they all meet somehow and when they, when they cross over and we have the scenes together so we know what they're about. My name's Navi Ahmed and I play Riz in Guilty Pleasures. These are the guys I was telling you about. This is Cole and that's Riz. Hi. Um, Hi. How are you doing? You alright? Mm. Can I get you a drink or anything? Mm, just a Coke for me, thanks. Just a Coke? So you don't want anything stronger? No. <laughs> To be honest, yeah, I, when I saw the script, I didn't really want to play, play Riz because obviously it's quite dark and sinister. And um, at the time, my little sister was 14 herself, so to be playing somebody who's preying on young girls at that age it was something quite difficult. But I read the script and it was a good story, and somebody had to play the bad guy, so I thought, you know what, just go with it. Excellent. So, um, what was it like working on this production, like working with Sunny, working with the casting crew? Yeah, I'd worked with Sonny previously before and uh, it was good, he's an excellent director and, and the cast was fabulous as well and it was just a, a joy to be involved with. Yeah. Anything that you, what kind of sort of tagline would you give to people to sort of come and watch your film? Like what would they, what would be their sort of, uh, what would they expect to see? Uh, I'd say, you know, if you're not hide, you know, if you don't want to hide away from the truth, um, you want to see the truth, you don't want to always see, um, you know, Asians being on TV just for, you know, being the sake of being on TV, you know, as 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 we always see them, you know, making a making a mockery out of themselves. I'd say come and watch Guilty Pleasures because it's not your typical stuff. Um, and again, like the story, it's uh, inspired by true events. It's uh, something that you know is going on right now. It's probably happening right now in a street not far away from here. Um, but we can't we can't turn a blind eye towards it. We need to. You know, we need to open our eyes and see what our children of the future are going through. Yeah, my name's Manvia and I play the role of Haroon, known as Haroon Rashid. What the fuck happened to you, man? Haroon Rashid? Language! Allow that! You see the state of his fucking face? Let's go, man. Excuse me? Just where do you think you're going? For wankness. Do you want to watch? <laughs> Come on, man. I thought it was a good character and for some reason, I don't know why, but I do I kind of get roles in a lot of thrillers, kind of character arc roles more than anything, which is probably the complete opposite to me in real life. But no, it was it was a good good role, definitely, yeah, definitely worth me doing. What was it actually like working in this production, like working with Sonny and the rest of the sort of cast and group? One thing I like about Sonny is that he's got a lot of passion, he's got a lot of determination, and he's someone who wants to do something, he wants to do something good from that project. You know, when he asked me to do it initially, ages ago, I couldn't do it. And then when he called me the day before, I was free and had availability, and he said, listen, that's happened. I've lost my character, and he goes, would you be still interested in doing it? And I just said, okay, I'll do it. But I've always liked Sonny's passion, his admir admiration, kind of just to see something through. And those are the kind of people that I would like to work with, because then you know something good can come from it. Because you've seen how nicely it was shot, wasn't it? It was really shot really well. And that's one thing I liked about working with Sonny. 
And uh, so, in terms of the topic of the film, yeah. like, you know, what was your first thoughts? Because obviously, was it something that you were quite uncomfortable getting involved in, or you know, was it something that interested you to, like, sort of yeah, understand I w- more? I wouldn't say I was uncomfortable with getting involved with it. I thought, you know, at the end of the day, this is happening, it's in the news at the end of the day, and, you know, whether it's a, a drama series on it, then it would be a good thing to do because it, it would bring that awareness to do that to do that and I just thought yeah you know it'd just be great to do and it was interesting to do it yeah I was shocked yeah and uh, I, I definitely took a step back but then uh, yeah uh, Sonny was such a, a help you know with the scene so yeah it was great was it something that you think that needed to be needed to be brought out in sort of like the film industry in terms of because it is a problem at the moment child grooming and and sex trafficking and that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's great because um, th- this film's coming out now about the uh, the historic child abuse from stars. Well, this one is another current, especially with, with what's happened in Glasgow. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's going to shock people, but it's going to bring awareness as well. Excellent. So, what was it like working with Sunny and the rest of the crew? It was great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd work with him any time, it really is good. He got what he um, set out to do, you know, um, if you look at, if you see the um, actual, you know, Guilty Pleasures, you can see that it's shot well and um, he got the um, scenes he wanted, you know, by being particular and, um, you know, just captured the moment, you know, and it, it, it was very good working with Sonny, you know, he knew what he wanted and... Um, He got what he wanted in the end, yeah. He really knows his stories, he really knows where he wants to take his stories Um, and uh, and has has a great vision and a great way of telling these uh, what he's trying to get across. And of of course what he has is, the stories he has is quite controversial and and really difficult to talk about for some people but I think Sonny does it really well. I don't think anybody could have done I couldn't have done a story like that and got away with it. I think I don't have the uh, I, I, I don't have the, the energy Sonny had when he put when he put his effort into this film. I think because within within the film, you obviously see the film, but at the same time you see that person struggle, you see their hard work, you see their dedication of how they try to make this on their own back, with not not many people helping, not having fundings from you know these big companies and organisations that you do get with big budget films. Um, not that I'm saying big budget films aren't great, they're amazing, but I just think there's something um, something real that you get with independent films that you don't get with big cinema. The best thing about independent films is because they they, they are coming from a single director who has a story to tell and a person who makes an independent film does it out of his own back sometimes out of his own money because he's got a really important story to tell now this is not money funding this isn't some rich person who's just going to give you lots of money as a tax write-off that's going to save and he doesn't care whether the film is good or not he's just and this isn't full of laws of bureaucracy uh, and uh, the style it's told, the film is shot and told. It's like not like your commercial style films. It's much more gritty, much more real. I find it. Uh, for example, there's a few scenes in, in Sunny's scene, uh, film that I really like. Now, what I really liked about them was because of the pauses. It made made things real. Now I know. Most uh, uh, editors or directors or producers will go, oh no, it's too slow, we need to move it on. Or oh, we can cut this part off, we can cut this part out. That's bits unnecessary and stuff like that. Well, for the director, sometimes it is those bits are necessary. The director wants to tell them the story. If anybody knows the story, it's the director. Uh, and sometimes for the punchline to come across at the end, or for a scene to work at the end, you know, he needs to tell his story and have other people meddling in and that's what I think is the best thing about indie films where normal commercial films you'll always have people like the studios going or the producers going no not good enough you know not good enough hasn't got enough boobs in it or whatever like you know that's what you get but with the indie films it's much more of 
more gritty, I think, more story-based. There's a lot of talent out there, and uh, unfortunately, I can speak from first-hand experience, you know, um, tackling musicals, and I'm writing a film with my co-writer, Marcus Langford, and to get funding is really, really hard. And there's so much talent out there, and it's really difficult for um, an independent filmmaker, especially if they've got a powerful story, to kind of... They don't always get the opportunity or chance or people, um, you know, um, contributing towards a film. But as far as I'm concerned, if you've got the right team around you, a film's um, got a powerful story, it's shot well, and you've got brilliant actors in it. And uh, if people all kind of get together, uh, you can make this kind of thing happen. But funding would help to kind of um, distribute it and get it out there, basically. I think uh, if, if, um, if I can't bring, or actors bring uh, ex their experience and experienced actors bringing something to uh, a talented group like that, that are, you know, in, in the seeding form and, and making something, and these are going to be our future directors and writers, and, and we have to give them a chance and and, 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 and offer our talent to them. If we don't do that, who's going to do that? And so it's a, it's a vicious circle. And um, yeah, so, so I've done a number of them where I help people. And, and uh, you know, um, uh, th thankfully, you know, uh, a, a very large handful of them have, have done exceptionally well. And they ended up in the mainstream. And, and they kind of remember you. That's kind of nice as well. It's one of the things, it's touching on, uh, a subject that's quite sort of difficult but unfortunately it does happen and uh, I just feel like it's a story that does need to be told and if you can um, you know open some eyes change some attitudes and views then that's a good thing do you know what I mean it addresses a lot of issues that are going on um, in that kind of scenario if you know what I mean very taboo but um, no one's got the guts to kind of um, approach that kind of um, field or subject and I think the way Sonny's done it is very tactful but it still puts the message across. <laughs> and so what, what kind of future projects are you working on? I'm going to start working on my next script now, Patient 52. Uh, it's another short, um, it's another dark sort of, you know, eerie film. Um, I wanted to write a comedy because um, obviously that's what I started off in. I started off in stand-up comedy and writing comedies and all that but I think I've done all that now and I want to kind of write things that actually you know would have an impact on people because tonight everyone walking out of that theatre had something to think about it wasn't just you know watch, when you watch a comedy you laugh but you forget do you know what I mean once once you left the theatre that's it but I bet now people driving back home and stuff are still talking about guilty pleasures because of you know the darkness of it and that's what I want to try and get with patient 52.